Okay. Three, two, one. LOL, our delayed claps. Um, <laughs> welcome back, everyone, to So We Persist. My name is Tamara Lash, and I'm the Iowa Woman of Color graduate assistant. And today, um, you may notice that Sienna is not on the line, but I am sitting here with Alex, um, and I can let her introduce herself. Hi, guys. My name is Alex Granera. I am the Aya. Oh, my glasses are really blurry. Um, I'm the AYA uh, Student Success Peer Facilitator. Um, I'm happy to be back on, and happy birthday, Sienna. Um, so as you can see in the background, this is Sienna's birthday, April 14th. Um, and we just wanted to give some space to share our appreciation for Sienna. She is our fearless leader and has done so much um, for Aya in particular, and I feel so lucky to be able to work alongside her and to learn and grow alongside her. She literally is like Aya's rock. So bless up to Sienna. One time for the one time. Um, and as always, I want to make sure that we're starting off our episodes with a land acknowledgement. And so again, I'm up in Portland. Alex is down in Corvallis. So we'll be sharing space for um, the Native and Indigenous folks in both of those areas. And I also, again, would like to highlight the Native Land app for folks to download to see the places in which they um, like to see the Indigenous folks who are living on their homes where they are at right now, even if it's not in Corvallis. So I will hop into our land acknowledgement. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will, some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life, and some have lived on this land for more generations than can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth, what we now call Portland, Oregon and Multnomah County were the traditional homelands of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Kalakamas, Cowlitz bands of Chinook, Tualatin Kalapuya, Malala and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. What is now called Corvallis, Oregon is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanefu Band of Kalapuya. Today, people from these bands have become part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ron, the Confederated Tribes of Sluts Indians, the, Ch the Chinook Nation, Confederated Tribes of Grand Ron Community of Oregon, the Confederated Tribes of Sluts Indians, and the Cowlitz Nation in Washington State. We pay respect to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. Ooh. And that again, was that was a lot, um, but I think it's really important as we like shift our so we persist and have people on who, like people may be in California, people may be, um, up in Portland or still down in Corvallis or in Eugene or whatever it may be. And so having us like continue to do the land acknowledgement, adding in these new places and thinking about how like this is a contemporary issue. Um, and even now in the time of COVID-19, indigenous, like native and indigenous people um, are tend, tend to be left out of the conversation. And so how are we continuing to like center our work and center our conversations with Native Indigenous folks in mind? Um, yeah, but that was a long one. I was like, breathe. <laughs> Make sure to breathe in between reading. Um, today, Alex and I want to chat through um, some nerdy things, some gaming things, but also talk a little bit about um, since we're all stuck at home and we tend to like maybe we feel like we don't have a lot to do or we don't know how to engage with different like arts or puzzles or whatever it may be, our screen time might be racking up 
And I definitely know mine is. My phone likes to remind me every Sunday that I've had more screen time than normal. Um, but yeah, Alex, I mean, talk to me about your screen time, maybe. You know what? Honestly, I have always been that kid that did a lot of screen time. I like to read a lot of ebooks. Um, and I think my phone doesn't take uh the fun uh educational things that i do on my phone into consideration but i will say that like having my education be online right now having half of my work be online right now has really skyrocketed like what i normally do like on my laptop or on my phone um and i feel like even beyond like your phone or your laptop, like, I find myself watching way more um, TV. I never watch cable, really. I find myself kind of watching a lot more cable television. Um, I definitely watch the news a lot more. I think that's kind of given with the situation that we're in. Um, but all of my screen time has just super gone up. So I feel you. Mm. How do you think that has impacted or has it at all impacted your mental health or um, just like how you're interacting with others? You know, I think this is so interesting because if we were talking about screen time before this COVID-19 like pandemic um, started like taking a toll, like on specifically like the US right now, I would, I wouldn't be as positive about screen time, but really I don't hold any like negative feelings towards screen time right now. If you like, that's really, that's all there is to do. That's how I'm communicating with my friends who are not in Corvallis or, you know, not in my house because of social distancing. Everybody should be practicing that. Um, that's how I'm like staying in the loop with people that I love, people that I can't go see in person. That's how I'm getting my um, happy Easter's out, my happy birthday's out. Um, I feel really um, grateful and blessed that I'm able to still connect with those folks, um, even though it's not in person. So I'm trying to give myself a little bit of grace around the screen time that's happening, um, because I do feel like um, at least half of it is um, like it's warranted, like um, it's more good than bad, I think. Mm. How about you? How have you been feeling about your screen time? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, with my family a lot. So like I'm with the people who I'm in the constant communication with. Um, and so for me, my screen time isn't so much for like, I would say genuine connections with people. I think a lot of my screen time has become TikTok, to be completely honest. Um, it has also become Instagram, um, Pinterest. I like scroll through things like that. And so that's where I feel like I can get caught up in my head about things. But something that I tried to do, and I talked about it a little bit on earlier episodes, is that for my Instagram in particular, and then my Pinterest has always kind of been like this, of curating it to be a museum or like um, a space where it has a bunch of beautiful things that I always want to see. And so like, I follow a bunch of different artists on there. I follow different clothing lines that I think are really cool and like put out um, moving images. I follow poets. I like follow places that can also help with my like mental health. And so I try to like curate an Instagram that an Instagram feed that makes me feel good mental health wise. But I know if my Instagram feed wasn't curated to like how I have it now, and maybe it was how it was a couple 
of years ago, I would be like not doing so hot just because I am someone who also like can get in a mode of comparing myself to folks. And so if I'm following people on Instagram who make me feel like, oh, I need to be working out or I need to like do whatever, or I wish my skin looked like that or whatever it may be, I think I wouldn't be doing as well as I am right now. Um, but because the channels online that I choose to connect with, I've like made so it's positive for me, um, I've been feeling a little bit better. Yeah, something that you said um, really like stuck out to me. I feel like the way that we're consuming social media right now can definitely have an impact on our mental health. And I really like how you mentioned um, like especially like influencers and having those kinds of things on your feed. I've also been seeing a lot of things like if you don't come out of this whole um, pandemic or social isolation thing with um, like no new skill or something, then it wasn't time. It's that you're unmotivated. And like, I want to like block that out, like right here, right now that like you don't need to come out of this like an expert in a new language. You don't have to become the next um, like best performing artist out of this. You don't need to write a book during this time. Like if what you need to do is like sit on the couch and play Animal Crossing, then like I think that's totally fine. Like you should be 100% protecting like you and your energy during this time. And I think it's just frankly like ridiculous that um, people are really out here um, telling folks how to like behave during this time of like, I don't know, like world panic and grief and uncertainty. Like, yeah, we should stop doing yeah. that. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. What? Yeah. Yeah, and I see it like that's where I get nervous about the different sides of social media, like being online and how much people may be moving to be online because we have to do that for our jobs. We have to do that for school. We're doing that maybe for our like trying to wind down time or whatever it may be. Um, so trying to be like really strategic about what we're consuming and making sure that recognizing that what we're consuming isn't the end all be all. Yeah. Because I know that would just, if I saw that, that would put so much added pressure on me to feel like I have to be doing something. And you know what? My biggest goal for this quarantine time is to make my island on Animal Crossing the best island it can possibly be. <laughs> right? Like, you know, like, my goal for the day was, I literally was, like, if I can take a shower today and get some sun, then I will have accomplished everything that I wanted or needed to today, and I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. So, if your Animal Crossing island is what you need to make you happy and feel like, yeah, I did something and it was nice to do that. Then I support everybody out there getting switches, playing that Animal Crossing. I haven't played yet, but it is in my house. You so played? no, I I mean like I could. It's in my house. I just what? I don't play video games. You don't play video games? No. Oh my god, whoa, what? I don't know why yeah. I thought you did. In my brain, I was like, oh yeah, Alex, Animal Crossing, her island's probably the shit right now. No, my island doesn't exist because I just, I don't play video games, so. Oh gosh. So talk me through some of the games that you do play because you are like my nerdy connoisseur wizard that I feel like if I wanted to, if there was one person in my life 
that I wanted to teach me about like different games that people could play or if it was like different readings or whatever it may be in this realm of life, I would go to you and you could tell me the things. You know, like that is such a big title and like (laughs) I don't even play board games. Um, I don't play card games. I um, have never been a gamer. Um, I guess, like, no, I've never even, like, finished a game of Monopoly. Um, Nothing. Uh, The only game that I have played and won at multiple times was Lord of the Rings Trivia. Any trivia games, I love it um games oh I guess that phone game Mm, heads up Uh, yeah heads up I played that game um yeah I wish I was a bigger gamer uh I know about a ton of games I've tried to participate in like D&D or like magic and like I can get through it I understand how to play it, um, but it's not the thing that I'm like, oh, I really need to join like a D&D group. Um, I'm more of like a reader. I'm really into sci-fi. I really love fantasy. I like writing. Um, I'm really into movies right now. Um, That's my thing. Um, I love indie movies, uh, but games, not really my thing. Okay, so you're teaching me things right now. Like, I am learning so much because in my brain, when I thought, or like when I think of nerdy things, or if I think of like magic and sci fi, then my mind automatically goes to like the gaming realm of life. Yeah. But you are telling me and like opening my eyes now that there's like a whole different realm of life that happens with like sci-fi different types of things and that can be like the books or the movies or whatever it may be yeah um you know like both of my brothers they're big gamers um I have a lot of girlfriends that are gamers um I just don't for me that's not really my forte um I I really like the concept. I don't like playing. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I'm sure I believe everybody out there who um, thinks that they're really fun. Um, Thanks to everybody who's ever invited me to join their D&D group or like that Magic the Gathering game. Um, I'm sorry for all the times I rejected being on your team (laughs) because I didn't want to play. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a lot more to like, um, nerdy or geeky things, or you can like geek out over a lot of things that have, um, nothing to do with like gaming culture, gamer culture. Um, but also like, I don't really, I don't really like gaming culture. I don't think that gaming culture is a very, um, welcoming or inclusive culture. Um, I see that a lot more, especially during um, people being indoors and people playing video games. Um, I think that women of color who want to participate in like gaming culture, they are so like brave because it is not something that's very inclusive for us. Um, I think maybe that could be why I'm a little turned off by it, Um, but who knows. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Well then can you share with us some of the things that you like to geek out on, like maybe the books or whatever you have? Yeah, so uh, my through and through favorite sci-fi world, um, favorite series, favorite franchise, favorite like languages. It's all in the Lord of the Rings. Um, I want a Lord of the Rings tattoo. I'm really into that. 
Uh, I wanted to be an Elvish. I'm really into different Elvish dialects. I think that's really fun. Um, I really love like cartoons. I love Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, that's one of my favorite series, one of my favorite cartoons. I like anime. I like different um, sci-fi worlds. Hmm. Um, I mean, I think the biggest and most well-known is Harry Potter, but I think like you can do a lot more than just Harry Potter. Like you can, you can geek out a little bit more than just like watching the films. Like you can write and read Harry Potter fan fiction. You can participate in like sculpting little Harry Potter, like mini worlds. Like there is so much more that you could like indulge yourself in if you like these things. Um, I think that really anything can be geeked out on and how you do it is you just determine that you like it you immerse yourself in it and i think you're beginning the process of geeking out i love that can you tell me what elfish is i don't know what that is it's elvish elvish and it's um so in the lord of the rings there's multiple different kinds of um elves there's like woodland elves and um oh my gosh this is embarrassing <laughs> but, <laughs> i don't know you're teaching me uh, but there's like um cinderin and like quenyan uh elvish language um my favorite is cinderin um because it's from the woodland elves which are my favorite elves um, but yeah, it's a completely made up language, but there's like grammar rules wow. and like people have really taken it to like the next level, like the next level. That's amazing. Yeah. There's like everything from Elvish slang to grammar rules to, um, like you can completely learn it, like learning a new language and it's made up. That blows my mind. And I yeah. definitely will be Googling that after we end our talk because I'm shook. Like I'm shook that yeah. it was completely a made up language. And I'm thinking about all of the people who had to like come together to like get behind this and also to like form the language too so the like community building aspect that comes with this and oh like, yeah that I don't know that seems like such a strong connection yeah and it's really interesting because um there's a lot more people that that are into it than I think people like realize or like think um like somebody who works for DCE has like an Elvish tattoo. Like, yeah, like. Or maybe don't tell me. I <laughs> but I'm like, whoa. Yeah, like there are so many people who are like more like nerdy or geeky than like people mm -hmm. realize. And I think that people have this perception of like, who is and like who is not a part of that culture i think people wouldn't typically associate somebody who looked like me as part of like geek culture but really it's for everyone it's how you like something it's how you immerse yourself in something um yeah anybody can be a geek about anything to the guys out there who are super into cars and you know everything about cars and you can spot your favorite car from like two miles away like you're geeking out about it so the people who can spot like mink eyelashes or like different makeup brands just from like a shade of, on somebody's face like you are geeking out about it. Like people who are really into hair and like know all the cuts and everything, you're geeking out about it. Like 
your favorite football team, like, sorry, you're a geek over it. Like, it's just, it is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't make the rules. I love that. I, I love that. And you're, even as you're talking, I'm thinking in my mind of all of the, like, misconceptions I had and the, like, stereotypical, like, geek or nerd that I had in my brain and really, like, you're making me force, like, take the time to unlearn those things that I created and those stereotypes I created in my brain around who can, like, engage in geek culture and who's a geek or who's a nerd and what does that mean and what are they doing, like, with that, like, what type of activities can do geeks and nerds engage with, and so I just, like, my mind is spinning right now. <laughs> I feel like I just got so much new information, and I'm also, like, this new language stuff, like, where do I find it, and how do I look into I it? And, like, I know, like, I love Harry Potter, and I think, like, I, like, slightly geek out about Harry Potter things, but I also didn't know that you could, like, make little worlds, and, like, yeah, what? It's it's crazy like there are groups of people for like specifically like harry potter where they make complete harry potter generations with like their own and like their friends characters like there's so much creativity that comes out of those things and like i don't know what's another thing that like you are really into because you think about something that you're really like passionate about or something that you're really interested in or something where you're like oh I love this thing with all my heart and it makes me so happy like you are a geek like you have most likely geeked out about something at one point and it's kind of just like I don't know that's information for you to do with whatever you want with I guess I love that well Alex Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I feel like that's a fabulous note to end on. Um, and just thinking about how we all can be geeks. And maybe if you have the time or if you're feeling inclined to do so, like geek out about something um, during geek the- Geek on everyone. Oh my God, I love that. Geek <laughs> on. That sticker. <laughs> Make that into a shirt or something if it's not already. Um, but thank you so much for spending some time with us. Again, my name is Tamara. I'm the IA graduate assistant and I use she and her pronouns. And this is Alex. Um, and we are so happy to continue to share space with you all through IA's platforms. And if you have any topics that you want us to cover, make sure you comment them. Um, tweet don't tweet it to us. We don't have a Twitter, but like send it to us on Instagram or Facebook, whatever it may be. Um, and again, I want to say happy birthday, Sienna. You are a light in my life and Aya is so lucky to have you. Bye everyone.